Hello, hello, hello. This is Gerald Salenti, and it's February 2nd, 2022. And we have with us today, again, we're so fortunate, we're so blessed to have the man, really, of, of, of these times, of the century, uh, Judge Andrew Napolitano. And nobody says what you say with the authority and judicial background that you have of what this country is losing, not only here, but around the world, as far as our constitutional rights, our freedom, and, and what we really need to do about it. And so we're really blessed to have you on as a, as a regular a guest on the Salenti and the Judge Show. And, you know, this is Groundhog Day. And I guess, the you know, so happy Groundhog Day. <laughs> well, uh, Gerald, it's a pleasure to be with you. And it is Groundhog Day. It's the same thing over and over. I don't mean our conversations, which to me is the highlight of the week. I mean, government suppression of liberty is over and over again. It just seems to be getting worse. Whatever COVID is or whatever COVID was, or whatever <laughs> it's going to be, it's dissipating. But the power that the government seized from us, it will keep and it will continue to use to repress us. The government's argument is that somehow, somewhere, not in print, because I've read it a thousand times, not in the Constitution, there's a health care exception to the Constitution. Some, some mysterious uh, clause written in invisible <laughs> ink that allows them to crush liberty in the name of public health and safety, even though the Supreme Court has ruled definitively that no such power exists. Yeah, what's supreme? Supreme bunch of what? Oh, by the way, great espresso today. All right. Local water. And, and, you ready for this? No, don't, don't tease me again. This is, I've never had one of these. This is a, a Neapolitan cannoli. Have you ever seen this? No, and I never heard of a Neapolitan I cannoli. I never did they either. Were Sicilian. And this is from Florentine Pastry Shop in, in Utica. You know, that was filled <laughs> with Italians at one time. And Dr. Scott brought these down and a whole bunch of others. So I put on some weight. But I have to tell you, you know, this is the culture of like what we grew up with and the tastes and the, the culture is gone. Yeah. It's so hard to find anything like this. There were really just really, really very, very few great Italian places, you know, pastry shops anymore. And they used to be like, you'd go to this one for the Suya Del. No, this one has better cannolis. You used right. to go to all the different ones, <laughs> you know? You're and now there's nothing. memories from my youth, Gerald. And, and our culture is being stolen from us. And it's, 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 it's the big picture. Our constitutional rights have been stolen from us. Our freedom has been stolen from us. And our culture, our culture has been stolen from us. Look at the little freaks that are in charge that we have to look up to. Look at the culturalist little, hey, how about a Zuckerberg, huh? Now, there's a guy for you. No, I like Cook. No, 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 that guy, Peach Eye, he's my kind of guy. It's all, it's all what? Uh, the geeks have inherited the earth. The King James Bible got it wrong. It's not <laughs> the, the meek, it's the, the geeks. And, and, and what they've done with this fake world, the online world, They've taken away the true culture of the people. Remember when musicians had to play the instruments? No, we don't need to do that anymore. So again, culture, and it all goes back to what we're talking about. They've robbed us of our freedom, and in doing so, they've robbed us of our culture. And, and we are not allowed to speak and say what we want. We are being blacklisted, and we're not free to be us. And you have this article about how they're stopping us from doing this because they're watching over us continually in your article, A Bias for Liberty. And you go on to say about how the United States is using spyware from Israel to you know, spy on us? An Israeli company called NSO <laughs> developed a product which they named... Pegasus, this product 
allows the user of it to type in the name, uh, the phone number of any cell anywhere in the world, and the user of Pegasus will immediately have access to everything that's in the cell, everything that's in here, financial, legal, personal, uh, professional. The Israeli government has shrewdly used this product to gain favor with foreign countries, so they've allowed the sale of it to about a dozen foreign countries, including the FBI. So the FBI purchased, the New York Times revealed this two or three days ago, the FBI purchased this and experimented with it for two years. Experiment. And lawyers in the uh, Trump White House and the Trump Department of Justice and the Biden White House and the Biden Department of Justice have debated for two years <laughs> over whether this thing is constitutional. Constitutional. On its face, it's unconstitutional. And uh, Joe Biden, to his credit, made the call but after two years of these experiments and said, the FBI is not using it. Where is it? It's in a warehouse in New Jersey. This is not from me. This is from two dogged, irrepressible uh, um, um, investigative reporters uh, at the New York Times. But it shows you how little respect the government has for civil liberties that it, it would even toy with a monster like this that it even could conceive that this could be constitutional. The Fourth Amendment requires a search warrant for all surveillance, and the search warrant must, quote, specifically describe the place to be searched or the person or thing to be seized, close quote, meaning they have to focus in on what they want. When this monstrosity, this Israeli product, is being used, there's no focus. The government gets absolutely everything that's in here. So on whom did they experiment in the two years that they used this in the last year of the Trump administration and the first year of the Biden administration. That's the question. Again, think of what you're just holding up, brought to you by the high tech people, the yes. geeks. Yes. And by the way, you know, I don't carry one, as you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I have an old flip phone that I just use when I travel in case somebody has to get to me, right? You know, but. And again, I've done research on this going back. I did work for the cellular telecommunications industry <clears throat> going back to the early 90s <clears throat> when they had boxes, remember, in the, in, the, in the trunk of cars with the aerial. Yes, yes. And I've been reading about the radio frequency radiation of these and the dangers of them since then. And every time a report comes out, they, they, it's, it's, one comes out and it's gone. We had an article in the Trends Journal um, well, about a couple of months ago, from a study from the University of California, Berkeley. And I'm not exactly sure, but I think this is accurate. If you hold it up to your ear for 17 minutes a day, 17 minutes for 10 years, your chances of getting a brain tumor increase only by 60%. Ooh. Hmm. And there's an article in this week's Trends Journal about the day, what, what it's doing to the sperm count. Mm. Now, these things are deadly. They, they banned them in, in France for many years for not allowing children to have them because the brain shield is thinner as your child. And they banned them, but now everybody uses them. The geeks, it's not the meeks, the geeks have inherited the earth and they're destroying us. And in going back to your article, about what, you're, what you said. And they said the government told the reporters that it needs to know about these spy tools. You ready? So it can combat crime and protect both the American people and our civil liberties. I mean, how can the government say that with a straight face? How could anybody possibly believe that? And I'm glad that the, that the New York Times, and you and I rarely agree with the Times, of course, and the same with most people watching us now, but I'm glad that the New York Times ran that quote because it shows that either the government believes its own nonsense or it thinks that we believe its own nonsense. The history of human freedom is the history of governments assaulting civil liberties. There isn't a government in the world that believes in civil liberties. The civil liberties are the opposite of government. Government is the negation of liberty. Civil liberty is the concept that our liberties come from our humanity. You know, that's it, it, Groundhog again. Day. Groundhog Day. Yeah. The same thing over and over again. A new event, a new government assault. 
If you had told me a month ago the government had this equipment, I would have said, oh, no, not the United States government. And I would have been foolish. As I said to everyone, nobody says what Judge Andrew Napolitano says with the authority and the, the judicial background. And that's why he, this passion that's coming out is true to the soul. And if we don't turn this around, it's only going to get worse. And speaking about the soul and speaking about freedom and liberty, you make it very clear to us in your article, and this will be out tomorrow, <clears throat> because our rights come from our humanity and our humanity is a gift. This may, they may take us off YouTube for saying this, a gift from God. <laughs> our rights are natural to us. No, they're not. Your rights are not natural. I'm a little piece of garbage scum crap called your president, your prime minister, your chancellor, your mayor, your senator. You have no rights. I will tell you what to do. No exaggeration, Gerald. No exaggeration. And the public needs to know how precarious our rights are and, and how we know that our rights come from our humanity. They don't come from the government. The government makes the claim that, uh, that uh, our rights are from God, but the government doesn't believe it because the government believes that rights are a spigot and it can open the spigot when it wants and close the spigot when it wants. That's what the government believes, no matter which party is in power and no matter which level of government you're talking about. Not far from me here is a beautiful town called Morristown, New Jersey. George Washington spent a lot of time there uh, during the American Revolution. And a magnificent mansion, which was his headquarters for a year and a half, is still there and it's now a lovely museum. The mayor of that town, on his own, has ordered everybody in the town to wear masks <laughs> indoors you... and outdoors. He somehow thinks he has the ability to do this. So it's not God. The government thinks they are God. Yes, government as God. You're right. The government. And then you go on to say here that for those who do not recognize the existence of a supreme being, you know that humans are the most intelligent beings on earth and we can reason and act freely upon our reasoning. Those human characteristics, reason and freedom come from within us. No, they don't. I will tell you what to do. You have no reason. You are just a stupid piece of crap. I know better than you. Look what's going on up in Canada. Mm. That little daddy's boy, that little arrogant daddy's boy, another guy born on third base with a silver spoon up as you know what, Justin Trudeau would be just nobody if daddy wasn't the egotistic Pierre Trudeau that ran the show before him. Right. This What's truck the is status strong. with the uh, with the truckers. God bless those truckers. They're the salt of the earth. What's the status of them? Are they still surrounding Ottawa? They still are to our knowledge. And here's the cover, by the way, of this week's Trends Journal. Keep on trucking. Yes. Mandate freedom. Freedom. So what they're doing, and I've been on a number of shows with them. Not with the truckers, but the people that are involved in this. What they're doing, the media, they're only covering the negative aspects. You had over the weekend, there were estimates up to several hundred thousand people in Ottawa taking to the streets. Wow. The story was some guy urinated on a statue. Oh, you got. What the hell are you telling me a guy pissed on a statue for? What is bullshit? That's what they're doing. So here's from that little arrogant piece of scum that's in control over there, Trudeau. Today, the House members of Parliament, you ready? Unanimously condemned the anti-Semitism 
Islamophobia, anti-black racism, homophobia, and transphobia that we've seen on display in Ottawa over the past number of days. Together, let's keep working to make Canada more inclusive. This is, th this is what was on. Now, I don't know if it's true. This was tweeted, and it shows him with the Justin Trudeau official government document. And he's been coming out over and over. Now, here's the story. He's saying how they're endangering all the people. This they're little challenging the government. That's what they're doing, maybe for the first time in the modern era. Yes, and the way they're doing it. And so here's what he came out and said. First, he said back on Thursday that one of his children got COVID, so he has to isolate, and he will not talk to the truckers, and there's no discussion. He has to isolate. And now he says he got COVID. All right, let me get this straight. You're blaming them because they don't want to get vaccinated. In order for them to go across the border, they must be vaccinated, according to his hind ass Trudeau. They must be vaccinated. I don't want to get vaccinated. I don't want it. It's my human body. I'll do what I want. No, you won't. Okay, we're protesting. Now, he's saying that they are, what they're doing is hurting the Canadian people. All right, let me get this straight. You got vaccinated. Everybody around you has been fully vaccinated and you got COVID. So make, why are you telling up. me, a trucker or anybody, that they have to get vaccinated when, here are the facts, folks, they lied, they sold this to Pfizer drug lords that had a 95 to 96% efficacy rate two years ago, November in 2020 and December. According to the Israeli health ministry, it's now down to 39%. Mm. When they sold it, they said it was only two shots would do you. Now you need a booster. And now as we have in this week's Trends Journal, the head over there, that guy Barola, whatever his name is, that's running the Pfizer show, that made $20 million in 2020. Now he's saying a shot a year. Mm. So now these people are protesting. Now think about this, Judge. It's what, about 10 degrees below zero up there? Yeah. And they're fighting for their freedom? Yes. And this is barely covered in the media. And when it is, as we write in detail in the Trends Journal, whether it's Drudge, whether it's AP, whether it's Reuters, you name it, anybody, they put on the negative aspects of it. And they never bring in one person that's involved with this to give their take on what's going on. You know, the media used to challenge uh, authority, but here they're just rolling over and becoming almost an instrument of the government's nonsense. Th this, is, this is one of the great mass demonstrations for civil liberties in the modern era. And it's not being yes. led by scholars and academics, yes. it's being, being led by Joe Sixpack. Yep. Thousands of Joe six packs, the salt of the earth. God bless them. And the media is talking about a guy pissing on a statue rather than these guys risking their health and their livelihoods to demonstrate for human freedom against an authoritarian government. You've said it perfectly. You can't I agree with you 100 percent. This is huge. This is really big. And again, I point out the Berlin Wall came down when the people went there and they didn't leave. Right. The, they had that farmers protest up in, uh, in, in over in India when Modi tried to pass a, a bill that would have put the small farmers out of business and gave it all to the bigs. They took to the streets day after day, night after night, week after week. They won. They just had a big protest over there in Serbia a couple of weeks ago. They wanted to build a lithium mine and they don't want it. The people took to the streets. They blocked the streets. They stopped it. It's the salt of the earth, as you said, and it's the soul of the people. We the people. How about we the people? How about giving us back our freedom? And of course, talking about giving us back, they haven't stolen it from us because we won't let them have it, but they've taken our rights away from us. I was supposed to be in Vancouver doing a gig and uh, I lost a lot of dough. 
I won't get the vaccination to go. It's my choice. You want to get it, get it. I don't want it. How, How about freedom? How did these truckers cross the border? Oh, they haven't. They're all up there. They're from they're from Canada that are that are oh. locking it. They, they in order for, in order for them to cross the border, they must be vaccinated. If not, they got to be quarantined. To, on and on and on. Right, all that nonsense. All that right. nonsense. Right. Oh, and right. then you saw the new study that came out that shows that the lockdowns and things from John Hopkins, it doesn't work. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Remember, they were going to flatten the curve. Billions, billions lost in assets and income in incalculable amount, because you can't put a number on it, of human freedom uh, crushed. Government increase in size and power, an increase that will never shrink back down to where it was. It already was bloated. Now it's uh, bloated uh, even more. How do we shrink it? How do, what, what can we do? Well, the government fears a loss of income, so it fears loss of taxes and it fears loss of jurisdictional area. If a couple of states seceded or nullified what the federal government is doing, the Supreme Court uh, has allowed Texas to nullify the federal government on abortion. Other states may soon follow. If we nullify the federal government on, on income taxes. That's the one. It would starve the federal government. That's the one to do. They made that crap up with that guy. What's his name, right? Your buddy over there from Princeton University. Uh, Woodrow Wilson. Yeah. The uh, federal income tax will never exceed 1%. Within two years, it was at 90% of adjusted gross income under That's his it. presidency. That should be the movement. That should be the movement. There's nothing the big government fears more than when it can't pay its bills, because then, like the old Soviet Union, people will stop working for it. Soldiers will throw down their guns because they won't have any ammunition That's and they the won't have any do food. It. That's the way to do it. Yeah. Taxation without representation, huh? It's, it's tyranny. Yep. Or Murray Rothbard and Frank Chodorov, taxation is theft. It is. You had a great quote in here, too, by... Um, uh, by Mises. Yeah. What was that? Liberty is essentially, excuse me, government is essentially the negation of liberty. Yep. Government is the opposite of freedom. Well, Judge, you gave it to us today, and this is really important. We could win this. We could win this. A brush fire of liberty. Who knows where and when it'll start, Gerald? It started here, and it's going to keep, the flames of freedom will keep on burning. Yes. Thank you so much for being as on, will, Judge. As will the Neapolitan cannolis. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to bite into it. <laughs> God bless Mwah. You. Mwah. God bless. Ciao, ciao. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And we'll see you next week.